began, like most neighborhood movements, with a need for some improvements. We lived, as generations of our families before us, on small southern Maine farms. But now we were surrounding an old white meeting house in which no meetings had been held for years, and a district schoolhouse from which teachers and pupils, books and flags, had lately vanished. We wanted to repair and restore and open our meeting house. We wanted to buy and keep our schoolhouse, which was up for sale by the town. So we formed an association and held kitchen meetings. A traditional box supper and an ice cream social covered our initial investment of $10. And so the members of the then Emery's Bridge Community Association acquired responsibility for two public buildings in the early 1930s. We met again and again, the Hooper, Emery, Hasty, Nason, Boston, and Walker families. Our men were good carpenters, but without materials there could be no renovation. Our women were good cooks, but we could not serve a public supper without tables and a room big enough to set them. Our children had inherited good voices for speaking and singing, but we had no auditorium suitable for the presentation of a concert or a play. By turns, one woman or another brought sweet cider and molasses donuts on trays into her best room to refresh her neighbors for another round of talks before another evening ended in the singing of old songs around a heavy breathing parlor organ. One night someone said, if only we had a movie camera, we could do that as the earth turns and show them out in Hollywood a thing or two about Maine folk. A year or so before, Gladys Hasty Carroll, a daughter of Dunnybrook, exiled with her university professor husband, had written a novel about her memories growing up in Dunnybrook. She called it As the Earth Turns. They had all read it, but the film had struck no answering chord. As Grammy M. Nason described it, it tixed our riceability. Couldn't talk right neither. We don't say cough and path and half like calf and path and half. What business did they have calling it the first realistic moving picture of American life? Maybe it wasn't all their fault. Maybe nobody from away can do it. Maybe nobody can talk like us, or do like us, or be like us, but us. There was a sudden hush. We sat around Cora Bickford's front room in the soft light of her big oil lamp and looked at one another with new interest. Were Maine farm people really unique? Were we unique? Did we have a secret nobody knew but us? Len Hooper slowly filled his pipe, lighting, tamping down the tobacco with the flat of his thumb, tilted his chair back on two legs, broad shoulders against the papered wall, blue eyes twinkling, and burst into an old song. We last night we sat under the shady green tree, the shady green tree, I oh, oh, put your arms round her neck, keep her neck warm, 44 kisses will do her no harm, will do her no harm, I hope. Oh, will do her no harm, but a great deal of good, so give her another, she's in the right mood, she's in the right mood, I hope. Oh. That is how it began. My neighbor told me the other day, you might say nobody really dies that's ever lived in a place like this. And I can say it because it is true. Nobody dies anywhere as long as one is left to remember him, remember exactly where and how he lived, what he said, his way of saying it, what he did, and what he stood for.